walk you through it, the very first thing a graphic novelist does is create an outline. Any book author, anybody who's making anything, you have to create an outline. It's the directions by which you're actually setting up the project. So um, just to kind of give myself a note as to what each chapter should include, um, what each chapter should outline, how it should begin, how it should uh, continue, and how it should end. So you'll see that I created bullet points throughout each chapter to lay out exactly what I would write or illustrate into those scenes. The next bit, which I think a lot of people aren't familiar with, is that comic books and graphic novels are not, don't start off with just the straight up illustrations and people put word bubbles in. You write a script. And the script for a comic book or a graphic novel is really no different than the script for a television show or a movie. This is a snippet of one of my chapters from my book before Land Remembered, which is The uh, Vampirate of Matanzas Inlet. And this actually outlines how I see each page before I visualize it. So you can see up here, I'll walk you through. This is page three. We see panel one. The door to the pirate house bursts open, and a shadow stands dominant, peering into the room. So I, that was my cue to say, all right, this is what I'm going to write, but this is what I'm going to draw in panel one. And then panel two, a hush falls over the crowd. So that tells me, all right, I'm going to visualize and illustrate a crowd. That's the dialogue that teaches me where I'm going to place the visual images and the story and how the story is going to progress. So this is my first step past the outlines. This just gives me the ideas of where everything's going to go and how everything's going to look. The idea for those layout images is to give me the idea. It's the blueprint. It's the IKEA directions for the eventual ridiculous, weird IKEA furniture piece I'm going to make out of this graphic novel. Um, but what it does is it just tells me where I'm going to put the images and what the images are going to look like. So it's the rough version. The size of those images, we call them thumbnails in the industry. Comic book artists call them thumbnails because really the images are no bigger than the size of your thumbnail. So this image you'll see right here, and I'll walk you through this uh, the second page, let's do that for a second. For me, it tells me, all right, this is what the layout of panel two or page two is going to look like. Now let's take a look at the final visualization. So if you didn't notice it before, now do you see it? Do you see the diversity or the, the um, comparison? Panel one, panel one, we still see the birds. Panel two, we see a person. Panel three, we see an angry person's face. We have Zek, the younger son, coming over the uh, fence, and then we see Tobias and Zek standing in the, um, on the uh, farm. So that is what each panel does. So when you look at this book, this book here is filled with all 300 pages that I had to visualize, and it starts off that way first before I put any pen to ink, or any ink to page. And then just to show you how it evolves, the next bit is to place in lettering. Now, um, I'm a huge fan of traditional lettering. Believe it or not, it's still a thing. Uh, but for the sake of time and for the purpose of, uh, for the ebooks that they wanted to create, all of the inking was done digitally, all the lettering. So um, I dropped the, uh, the uh, image that you see there in those books. I dropped them, I scanned them into the computer, and I used what's called a Cintiq monitor. It's a 2,000-point uh, pressure system computer screen that actually has a flexible screen and allows me to draw right on it. So while a lot of artists use it to draw full on images, my only purpose for this was to help with cleanup and then, of course, to use the digital medium to il uh, illustrate the words. So the final bit that I put into each page is, of course, the script. If you're going to be a graphic novelist, my first recommendation to you is that you need to find an artist. You need to find somebody who can adapt your words and create a visual representation because ultimately that's how it's going to look in the end. And if you want to pitch it to publishers and editors, ultimately they're going to want to see the finished manuscript. A lot of the publishers you'll be looking for are independent publishers. So these are publishers, unlike Marvel and DC, who will say, yes, we love your script, and we're going to partner you with this artist, and we're going to take care of the expenses. Not a lot of people are going to do that. And even Marvel and DC don't do a lot of creator-owned projects. So who you're going to be looking for, like Image Comics and Dark Horse and um, maybe Vertigo, and First Second, and Oni Press, and Boom Studios, people who kind of will take people's creative projects and publish them. But even still, the uh, editors want to see an artist. So there's a number of ways you could go about looking for an artist. The internet is full of them now. Um, Instagram is a really popular place. If you ha type in comic books in Instagram, you'll pick up every artist who hashtags comic books. 
So you can go through Craigslist. Believe it or not, when I graduated, I did freelance uh, illustration for children's books for everybody in the world who wanted to make a children's book. Um, I literally scoured uh, Craigslist for all the children's book wanted illustrators. Um, it's the same thing for comic artists. Some people are out there, they put up classifieds, they're looking to work on people's projects. Uh, the final option is um, just Google it and look for people who are artists. Oftentimes, self uh, uh, freelance artists will work on your projects. And what you'll want to do with them is a pitch page set series. So maybe five to six pages of your manuscript visualized into a comic book form so that you can pitch those pages as a sampler to the editors or the publishers. Now, my day job is I work at the Savannah College of Art and Design as a career advisor. So just to prepare you, if you weren't prepared for this, they are gonna wanna be paid. Um, any artist who isn't willing to get paid is doing themselves a disservice. So you've also gotta figure out what you're willing to budget yourself for. Are you willing to do five, $600 to pay for five to six pages, which is gonna be around roughly low end typical? $100 an illustrated page is what some artists will do it for, going all the way up to maybe $300 a page. It all depends on who you're willing to pay. Um, and then ultimately, you're going to have to hit the pavement and seek publishers, seek editors, go to conventions. Oftentimes, comic books uh, publishers will open up submissions, so you can get submissions on the websites. Some people even go down the track of finding um, literary agents. There are lit agents for comic books. Uh, just to prepare you, if any lit agent ever tells you, yes, I'll rep your comic book, but you have to pay me X amount of dollars beforehand, run for the hills. Because a lit agent is not supposed to take money up front. It's a back end sort of thing. Some of them who really, like I guess, get to the point where they think they are hot enough to do that, can do that, if they have that reputation. But if you are gonna go down the lit agent route, be prepared, a hundred other people are too. So a lot of times now it's gotten to a point where you have to impress the middleman just to be able to put yourself in front of the big wigs. Um, but the other option I would recommend you do is if you're not familiar with it, Kickstarter is a great platform, social crowdfunding. Uh, there's Kickstarter, there's Indiegogo, there's, um, what's the other one I'm thinking, I'm blanking out on, Indiegogo, Kickstarter, um, GoFundMe. Uh, you can oftentimes, uh, submit your uh, sample pages online to those platforms and say, hey everyone, I'm creating a uh, graphic novel. It's about this and this and this and this. Here's the beautiful artwork we're going to show. Um, support our Kickstarter. And then you uh, have people out in the ether, out in the internet, who actually chip in to help pay for your uh, production costs. And the thing is, is that will allow you to create it on your own. But what's really great about a successful Kickstarter, which is what we found with the last book, when I did Simon Says, I pitched it to everybody. No publishers picked up on it. I think I had one publisher interested in it, but it wasn't the publisher I wanted. We then, six months later, did a Kickstarter, and I had publishers knocking on my door, saying, hey, we want to publish this book now that it's successful. Because the Kickstarter shows it as a successful platform that the publishers can now say, oh, he's already got a built-in audience, let's bring him in. So my bet, my uh, long story short, what I'd recommend to you as an aspiring graphic novelist, find yourself a good artist that you like, preferably locally if you can, do a sample of five to six pages, and while you're also trying to find a, an actual lit agent or a publisher to publish your book, jump on Kickstarter, it's free, publish, uh, put it on Kickstarter, see if anybody bites.